Hey mates, in this video you'll see a detailed guide for the Drage. If you will find any new information, don't forget to press a like button, subscribe and leave a comment. Enjoy the video. First of all, I would like to start with basic information about the Drage. The movement speed of the Drage is 4.6 meters per second. Teleporting speed in the daytime is 12 meters per second. In nightfall, his teleporting speed increases and becomes 38 meters per second. The movement speed of the Drage when he's holding or charging his remnant is 3.68 meters per second, so it means that he's slower than survivors. In case you don't know, the movement speed of survivors is 4 meters per second. Now it's time to talk about the nightfall. The duration of nightfall is 60 seconds. When nightfall is active, the teleporting speed of the Drage is increasing. It means that it will be much easier to control the map, the generators, and also it will be much easier to catch survivors. Because when Nightfall is active, you will have undetectable status. It means that survivors won't hear your terrorists, so you can easily surprise them and down them. Also in Nightfall, it's actually difficult for survivors to run from the Drage. It's because it's pretty hard to see something. And in Nightfall, the cooldown of his ability will be much shorter. Nightfall activation. Nightfall needs 300 charges for activation. There are multiple ways to get charges for the Nightfall. The first one is basically to hide in a locker. When Drage is hiding in a locker, you will get 6 charges per second. When you will hit a survivor or hook him, you will get 20 charges. Teleporting back to the remnant gives 10 charges. Also, you will get more charges when multiple survivors are injured or dying. For each injured survivor, you will get an additional 1 charge per second. Because of that, anti hell builds are working pretty well on him. Also, there are some add-ins that will increase the number of charges you will get. We'll talk about the builds and add-ins later. How to use teleportation more efficiently Teleportation is a perfect tool for finding survivors and for controlling the map. Also, you can use teleportation in chases, especially when Nightfall is active. You should know that Sword can lock the lockers. Because of that, sometimes it won't be efficient to use teleportation in a chase when a survivor is close to you because you'll give him a chance to get a distance from you. But it doesn't mean that you should never use teleportation in a chase. It depends on the situation. How to use the Remnant a remnant is a great tool for anti-loops and mind games, but most players do not know how to use it efficiently. First, you should know that if a survivor will go into a remnant, your remnant will disappear. There are multiple techniques of ways to use the remnant. The first one and the funniest one is the camping remnant. I enjoy using remnant for camping when I have make you a choice in my build. And now I will explain to you why. After a hooking survivor, you can place your remnant close to a hook and hide it somewhere. And then you should make a distance for activating make your choice. After an unhook, that survivor will be exposed and you can go back to your remnant and kick his ass in a few seconds. A second way to use a remnant is for anti-loops. I call this technique quick port. Most of the time, Drage players are placing their remnant at the beginning of the loop. And after that, they are trying to close that survivor. Of course, yeah, it's a good idea, but it won't work always. Because most of the survivors are expecting this kind of movement from the Drage, and they will just leave that loop. Because of that, sometimes I'm using quick port technique to confuse survivors. For example, now you'll see footage where I'm using a quick port technique. As you see, I placed a remnant in a pallet and went a little bit further, and then went back to my remnant and hit a survivor. Felix thought that I will try to close him in this loop and also he didn't expect this kind of movement from me. Because of that, quick port is really good technique to confuse survivors and if a survivor will decide to go to another loop, you won't waste any time and maybe you will hit him. The most important thing is to use remnant when you are out of sight of a survivor. It will increase your chances to hit a survivor. If you will see how you use your remnant, he will try to go to another loop and also you won't be able to surprise him. And the last way to use the Remnant is for mind games. Remnant is really good for catching survivors in the kill shack, tunnel walls and in jungle gym. The idea is the same as in the quick port technique. Use your Remnant to confuse survivors and be unpredictable. Bonus tricks and tips for that rage. While you are teleporting, if the aura of that locker is yellow, it means that the locker is locked. You can grab survivors when they are locking the lockers. And also, the dredge is really good for countering the head-on. If you see a survivor in a locker, you can just teleport to that locker and grab him. Dredge is the most toxic killer in the game. If you want to make survivors angry or force them to disconnect, you can spam your ability button. I tried it a few times against toxic survivors and it was really fun. Also, he's making some weird noises. Survivors can lock a logger only once, because of that try to always break all logs that you see. The best add-ins of the Drage The Drage has three types of add-ins. The first one is for increasing the number of charges you can get for the Nightfall. 
For this type of add-in there are only two really good add-ins. It's a Mal Tinker Skull and the Burnt Letters. Burnt Letters will increase the number of charges when you will hit a survivor. Without add-in for hitting a survivor we will get 20 charges. With this add-in it will be 25 charges. Mal Tinker Skull increases the nightfall meter charge rate when survivors are injured by 66%. This is the best add-in of the rage, and now I will explain to you why. From an injured survivor we are getting 1 charge per second. If we are using Mal Tinker Skull it will be 1.66 charge per second. And now imagine a situation. We injured a survivor and after that he spent 30 seconds healing himself. In this station if we had Mal Tinker Skull we would get 70 charges. 20 charges for hitting a survivor and 50 charges we will get because that survivor was injured for 30 seconds. In the second station, we did the same thing, but we used burn letters. In this case, we will get only 55 charges, 25 charges for hitting a survivor and 30 charges because that survivor was injured. As you see, Malting Gear Skull is much better for farming charges of Nightfall. With Malting Gear Skull, if all survivors are injured, you will get Nightfall in 45 seconds. It's insane. The Drage has two really good add-ins for information. The first one is Worry Stone. When a survivor will lock a locker, you will see his aura for 6 seconds. With this item, you can get information about survivors at the beginning of the game. The second one is Microphone. When you will use the last token for the telepod, you will see the auras of all survivors for 3 seconds. The last type of dredge addons are for more pressure on survivors. With Fix Recorder, Nightfall will be active at the start of the trial, and you can instantly start to pressure survivors. But in my opinion, Broken Doll is much better. A Broken Doll increases the duration of Nightfall by 20 seconds. It means Nightfall will last 80 seconds, instead of 60 seconds. Also, if you will use Malting Your Skull with this addon, it will be a pain for survivors. Now it's time to talk about the builds for the Rage. The best Rage build. In this build we have Deadman Switch and Pain Resonance for blocking gens and also for aggression, Floods of Rage for information and make your choice for insta downs. As I said previously, you can use Camping Remnant to down exposed survivor. With this build you will have a really good slowdown, insta downs and information. Anti Hill build. In this build we have Discordance for information about survivors, Slappy Butcher and Gift of Pain for decreasing healing speed and Jolt for some aggression. From addons I recommend using Malting Skull and Burnt Leather. With this build it will be much harder for survivors to heal themselves, it means you will get much more value from Nightfall. Mix build. In this build we have Jolt for regression, Pain Resonance and Deadman Switch for blocking giants and also for regression, and Slappy Butcher for decreasing healing speed. From addons I recommend using Waristan for information at the beginning of the game and Microphone for information about survivors at the end of the game. With this build you will have everything. Overthink, insane regression, slowdown and pressure on survivors. I have the gameplay videos with all these builds on my channel. I will leave the links in the comment section and in the description of this video. Guys, I hope you got some new information about the rage. See you next time. Bye.